Hi everyone, this is lesson 6-6 for Algebra 2A. Um, we're wrapping up our section on logarithms today um, by talking about how to use logs to solve exponential equations. So this is one of the primary purposes of using logarithms. Not the only one, but um, this, is, this is one of the main reasons why logarithms become necessary. So let's suppose I gave you an equation like this and I said to solve for x. Well, we don't really have a way to get that x out of the exponent, but let's see if we can do at least this. Estimate the solution between two consecutive integers, okay? So that would be like, you know, x is somewhere between this number and this number. So let's think about our powers of 2. We know, you know, we could go through 2 to the first, 2 to the second, 2 to the third. Um, eventually, you're going to come upon 2 to the fifth power, which is 32, and then 2 to the 6th power is 64, okay? And of course, we could use a calculator to do those. Um, the powers of 2 are usually pretty easy. But So because 40 falls between 32 and 64, that gives us a sense that the exponent must be between 5 and 6. So as far as an answer goes here, I know that this exponent, um, let, me, let me write this more technically, um, we would say that x is somewhere between 5 and 6, okay? So now let's suppose we wanted to get more accurate, okay? Let's suppose we wanted, you know, to get closer to the actual value and not just say it's somewhere between these two numbers. If I wanted to get down to the thousandths, what I would probably have to do is take 2, and we know it's somewhere between 5 and 6, so I would have to start going, okay, how about 2 to the power of 5.1? 2 to the power of 5.2, 2 to the power of 5.3. Okay, we're getting pretty close there. So 2 to the power of 5.4. All right, that puts me over 40. So now I know it's somewhere between 5.3 and 5.4, right? So I could narrow it down that way. So then I could start saying, all right, what about 5.31, 5.32, 5.33? Think about how tedious that's going to get if you want an accuracy of a thousand. That would be three decimal places. So I would have to repeat that process over and over again. And even that, I'm still getting a rounded value, right? So let's talk about how to actually solve this thing. Um, let me take this equation, 2 to the x equals 40. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take a log on both sides. Now, you can do a log with any base you want. doesn't matter which base you're taking. Um, however, I'm going to recommend that we use base 10, right? Because base 10, we can use our calculator for. So when we do this process, I'm always going to use a common log. Okay, so I'm going to take a common log on each side. And then I want you to think about this side here log of 2 to the power of x, and based on those properties that we just learned, this exponent here can slide down in front of this expression. So now what we have is x, oh come on, x times log of 2, common log of 2, equals common log of 40. And the reason that's important is now that x is being multiplied by something, so I can get it by itself using division. I can come along on both sides and say I'm going to divide by log 2, divide by log 2. And this will now give me an accurate answer, and that I can do in my calculator. So I can do log 40, I'm going to close my parentheses, divided by log 2 and I end up with 5.3, and I let's see, accuracy-wise, they wanted the thousandth place, so 5.322, okay, would be rounded to the nearest thousandth. That is a lot more efficient than going through and doing trial and error, you know, narrowing it down to the, to the ones place, and then the tenths place, and then the hundredths place, and so on. Um, and just to check here, I could do 2 to the power of 5.322. Now, that is still a rounded value, so I'm not expecting this to be exactly 40, but it's awfully, awfully close. Okay, and if we went a little further with our decimal, we would have more accuracy. So, that right there is the process that we can use to solve when there's an x up in the exponent. Every single time there is a variable in the exponent, you're going to take a log, a 
preferably a common log on each side to bring that exponent down, okay? So let's look at this next question. Next question is not technically an exponential equation, although we're going we're gonna to make it one. Um, it says solve or evaluate log base 12 of 780. Well, let's just say if we want to know what this equals, I'm just going to set this equal to x. Gosh, none of my pens are working today. And I'm going to rewrite this as an exponential equation. So I'm going to say 12 to the power of x equals 780. And now I'm going to treat that exactly how I did up above. I'm going to take a common log on each side. And I know that that allows me to bring this x down here, right? So now what I have is x times log 12 equals log 780. Yeah, worst pens ever. This will not let me down. Okay, so this will be log 780. Okay, then I'm going to come along and divide by the log 12 to get the x by itself. And we end up with x equals, this is going to go in my calculator, so I'm going to do log 780. Don't forget to close those parentheses. That, that is one mistake that I see pop up once in a while. Divided by log 12. And we end up with x equals 2 point, I'm going to go 680. Okay. So this leads us to something called the change of base theorem or the change of base property, um, which really, and, and this is the reason why it works. We're going to kind of learn this as a, as a property, but, but this justifies why this works. If I'm trying to do the log base something of something else, I can find that by doing the log of this number, I'm sorry, the log of the A, the log of this number, divided by the log of the base, which is exactly what you saw me do here. I did log of 780 divided by log 12. That's what happened in this step right here. Okay, And technically, I can use any base I want. That's why this is called the change of base theorem, because I'm changing from base B to base X. But for our purposes, the common log is really what we want to focus on, because that's the one that our calculator will do. Okay, So Anytime I'm asked to do log base something of something else, the shortcut is take the log of this number in your calculator divided by the log of this number. And again, the reason that works is because of this math that we did up here. So this is a great shortcut while you're in it, right? While we're in this section, you're probably going to memorize this and use this and do these problems really quickly. But later on, eventually, you'll want to remember that this is where it comes from because that you'll always be able to fall back on. This you might, you know, lose from your memorization, but this you'll always be able to remember how a log works and then know to take a log on each side, and that's what leads you to this conclusion, okay? Sometimes even for myself, as I'm, as I'm running through these problems and making answer keys or whatever, um, I have to stop and question, wait a second, which order do I divide those in again? And this is what I do mentally. I, I set this equation up and I say to myself, okay, I'm going to take the log on each side and then I need the x by itself. So this is the one I'm dividing by. Okay, so let's do a couple examples. Yeah, not very many today. Um, these are just some exponential equations here. And remember I told you anytime you've got a um, variable up in the exponent, we're going to use logs to bring it down. So I would take the log on each side here, the common log, and in this case the exponent is a 2x, so I'm bringing the 2x down in front. So that's going to leave me with 2x times log 3 equals log 438. Okay. I'm going to get that 2x by itself, so I'm going to divide by log 3. We're running a little short on space here, I think. And that's going to lead me to, let's see, log 438 divided by log 3. Whoops, sorry, you can't see what I'm doing there. Um, gives me 5.536. 
So now I have, and remember that was a, what was it, a 2x? So 2x equals 5.536. And then just don't forget at the end, um, on this one, because that's a 2x, we need to go in and divide by the 2 to get x by itself. I'm going to just take that number and divide it by 2, and I end up with 2.768. There would be my first one. Okay. Now, with this next one, that next one involves an E. You know what? I actually might do this example first. I think let's do this example because it's more similar to that one we just did, and then I will circle back where I have some more space and work through this one with the E. Okay? So with this one, what I want you to notice is I do want to take a log to get that X out of the exponent, but I've got this 2 floating out here. I don't want to worry about doing logs until I'm down to just an exponential equation. So before I start anything here, I'm going to divide by that 2 that, uh, that's out front. Now, I can't mess with any of those numbers up in the exponent yet, but I can um, get rid of that 2. So now I have this. 3 to the power of 6x minus 5 equals, let's see, 4374 divided by 2 is 2187. This is the place where I would take a log on each side. And when I bring this exponent down, I'm going to put it in parentheses just to kind of separate it from the log part. So I'm going to write this as 6x minus 5 times log 3 equals log of 2187. From there, I would divide by log 3, that cancels, so I'm doing log 2187 divided by log 3, okay, hmm, that's not too bad, so that's 7, which means that 6x minus 5, which is what's left over here on the left side, is just equal to, in this math, we got 7. Um, now I'm just solving an equation. So add the 5 to the other side. So 6x equals 12. And this one comes out nice and clean. The x is equal to 2. OK, so let's talk about the one with the e, because I want to explain to you why this one's just a little bit different. You could technically do this one the exact same way. You could do a common log on each side. But there's actually a way to do it that's even easier than, than the other ones have been. So I'm going to give myself some space here. Um, I have e to the power of 2x equals 438. This is the only exception to when I said we'll always use common logs. Um, because this has an e in it, I have another type of log that my calculator will do, and that's the natural log. And natural logs have a base of e. So I'm going to show you why that's going to make life a lot easier here. So I'm going to take a natural log on each side. Because remember I said we can do a base of anything. So I'm going to do a base of E with a natural log. Bring this 2x down in front like I normally would. So now I have 2x times the natural log of E equals the natural log of 438. Okay. So I want you to think about this right here. The nat and, and normally at this point we would divide by that log, right? But think about the natural log of e. This is like saying e to what power makes e. The natural log of e is just 1. And if it's just a 1, so let me, let me show that this is just really a 1. If it's just a 1, I don't have to do anything with it, right? Essentially, it just cancels out, and I'm left with 2x equals natural log of 438. And so I can really probably just do this in one step. I can just divide this by 2, divide this by 2, and in my calculator, I'm going to type in this. Now, notice that's not a log. That just came from the 2 that's in front of the x. So I'm going to do natural log of 438, close my parentheses, and then divide by 2. And that would be my answer there. So in this case, x would be 3.041. And if I wanted to check that in my calculator, I could go to the e to the x. So 
e to the power of, and then what was it supposed to be? 2x, so 2 times 3.041, and that should come out awfully close to 438. Let's just check it. Yeah, and I would say the discrepancy there is just from us rounding off that decimal. Okay, that should be 438. So when you're working with an exponential equation that has an e in it, I recommend that you use a natural log instead of a common log. Um, you don't have to. You could have done a common log on both sides. You would have just ended up having to divide by the common log of e, which you could do in your calculator. Okay, but the natural log of e cancels itself out, and that's why usually when I see an e in my problem, I know that I'm going to use a natural log. Okay, I'm going to divide this into two videos, so I'm going to do another video in just a minute that goes over the examples on the back of this page. It may be useful for you, the, the back of the page goes into some word problems and really kind of circles back over the whole chapter. Um, because this is kind of the end of the chapter for us, this is the end of the material that we're going to be covering. Um, so it may be helpful for you to pause after this video and go attempt the homework and go do at least the first few problems of the homework that just kind of cover these basic ones and then come back and watch the examples of the harder questions and then finish off your homework after that. Okay, just, just to let yourself process a little bit. Okay, um, so stay tuned for a second video.